Hi, this is Craig Stocks here for Utah Desert Remote Observatories. You can find us online at utahdesertremote.com and we'd love to talk to you about either hosting your telescope equipment in our observatory in southwest Utah, or if you'd like to rent imaging time by the hour on some of our equipment, we can accommodate that as well. Today I want to talk a little bit about color mapping images, uh, particularly monochrome images. And if you go to the website, again, utahdesertremote.com, and go to the section labeled blog, and at least as of today, the, the latest blog entry is a progression of Pac-Man processing. Uh, click on that to go to that blog post, and you'll see a succession of, of different versions of the Pac-Man nebula, starting with just the, the stars by themselves, a uh, basic one-shot color camera view of the Pac-Man Nebula, uh, kind of hiding behind the stars, and then starting to work into some of the narrow band versions, uh, the first one being a simple hydrogen and oxygen, so an HOO version where hydrogen is mapped as red, oxygen is mapped as green and blue. <clears throat> and then along the bottom row, we have three other uh, alternative mappings that also includes sulfur. Uh, the typical narrow band uh, process uses hydrogen, sulfur, and oxygen filters to image those three elements individually. And since they're imaged in black and white with a monochrome camera, then you have the freedom to choose how you want to color map those to be able to visualize where the gases are most prominent in the nebula. The first one is a simple HSO, where hydrogen is red, sulfur is green and oxygen is blue <clears throat> and then knowing that you can look at the picture and you can say okay all of this red area we know that's hydrogen this white blue area in the center uh, must be oxygen and then this orange yellow area around the perimeter must be sulfur so you can begin to see there's oxygen hydrogen and sulfur that make up this nebula it's not if you look at the either the HOO or in particular the uh, the simple color image, pretty much all you see is red because the hydrogen just kind of overwhelms everything. And to make matters even more complicated, hydrogen and sulfur are very nearly the same color of red. So it's very difficult to pick out the difference between one or the other. The SHO version uses a different color mapping. In this case, sulfur is mapped as red hydrogen is green and oxygen is blue. Uh, again, the purpose is to allow us to visualize how those elements are distributed throughout the nebula and also to make you know something of a pretty picture. Uh, the third version is a little more unusual, uh, oxygen, hydrogen, sulfur. But again, once you know the color mapping scheme, in this case an OHS or oxygen, hydrogen, sulfur, then you can use that knowledge of the colors to identify where the various gases are most prominent. And to me, in this particular example, the OHS color mapping is maybe the easiest to see the distinctions between where oxygen and hydrogen and sulfur are, are most prevalent. Uh, you may find other mappings are easier to visualize or more difficult. Uh, and there's really no right or wrong. It's up to you as the artist and the astronomer to decide how you want to represent it. And the second purpose of this post, if we scroll down through the, the blog, and you can obviously read about it, I've also included the narrow band images plus the, uh, the image of the stars that I used. So you can actually download this and try it for yourself. So if we look at the hydrogen, if I just click on any one of these, it'll open in a new tab, full screen. So this is what the hydrogen looks like in that nebula with the stars removed for clarity. So if I right click on this, I can save this image to my computer. And then I can do the same thing with oxygen, sulfur, and the stars. So I end up with these four files downloaded onto my computer. I can then use Photoshop or lots of other tools. I happen to use Photoshop most of the time to do the color mapping. So I wanted to just step through how you would do that and how you could explore different alternatives. So let's pop into Photoshop. And if you've watched any of my videos before, you've probably seen me do this. I'll go to File, Scripts, Load Files into Stack. And that will give me this dialog box where I can browse 
to find the files that I want to load. And in this case, we'll have to go hunt for them a little bit. I believe they're stored in this folder in the subfolder and there are the four folders. Click the first one, shift click on the last one to select all four. Click OK. <clears throat> It'll load that into the list and then click OK again to load those four files. Now it may or may not load them into the correct order you want, but when it's done you'll see those four files as individual layers in the layers palette over here currently configured in the essentials workspace uh, so that the layers palette is at the lower right it, <clears throat> and sure enough it did not load them in the order I want it has hydrogen on top and then oxygen and then the stars and then sulfur so to start with I'm going to rearrange these a little bit I'm going to click on the stars layer and I'm just going to click and drag that up to the top of the layer stack so it's on top. And then I'll turn it off so I can see what's below. And I generally like to have hydrogen on the very bottom. So again, I'll just grab the hydrogen layer, pull it to the bottom, and then I'll grab the oxygen layer and pull it between the hydrogen and sulfur. So I have hydrogen on the bottom, oxygen, sulfur, and then the stars. And of course, we can use the eyeball to turn individual layers on and off. If you see this checkerboard pattern, that shows that it's a transparent area. So if we turn on the hydrogen layer, there's hydrogen all by itself. And even though this looks like a monochrome grayscale image, it's actually a color image. It has all three colors in it, red, green, and blue. It's just that the values of red, green, and blue are equal at every pixel. And when red, green, and blue are equal, we get a neutral color, gray, black, white, but, but no color. It's when red, green, and blue are equal, then we get what we would call white light. And we can use that to select which color we want to kind of show for each layer. The hydrogen is on the bottom, and as right now it's contributing all three, red, green, and blue. If I turn on the oxygen layer, now it's contributing its red, green, and blue. But if I double click on the layer to the right of the layer name, that will open the advanced blending dialog box. Well, it will open somewhere sometime. I think I need a new mouse. So there's the dialog box. And if we look in the center, we can see there's a section called channels with a red, green, and blue and a check mark next to each channel. And we can turn this into a, a color image by for this layer, since we want hydrogen, let's say, to be green and blue to create an HOO image. We want red from hydrogen, green and blue from oxygen. I may have said that incorrectly earlier. So all we need to do is turn off the red on the oxygen layer. And if you saw the change, we now have an HOO image where the hydrogen is contributing the red and everything else is being contributed, the green and blue, from oxygen. Now, if you open your own images and you don't see this red, green, and blue, that could be because you're looking at grayscale images rather than RGB images. And the way to fix that is to go to image mode and make sure that RGB is checked. If grayscale is checked, then you just need to check the RGB color, and that will create those three color channels for you so that you can do this. But that easily, we created an HOO image from these two grayscale hydrogen and oxygen source files. If we want to add the stars, we can go to the stars layer, and click the uh, visibility eye eyeball to turn that on. And you'll notice by default, it starts out in normal blending mode, which means it just overlays what's below it. What we really want is just the stars. And the way to do that is through the advanced blending options. Right now, our blending mode is normal. If I click on this drop down, we'll see there's a lot of different blending modes we can use. And the third grouping 
light and screen, color dodge, a linear dodge, a lighter color, will basically use just the information that, where it's brighter than what's below. And in this case, the screen mode works very well. One thing to somewhat watch out for, if we use the light and blending mode, that gives us nice small stars, but notice that the stars don't show up here in the center. And that's because this center area of the nebula is so bright that the stars don't really lighten that area enough to be able to see them. If we use the screen blending mode, then we do see stars that uses the brightness of the star to brighten what's below. So we do get to see stars everywhere. So you can kind of play with the blending modes to find which one looks best to you for your data. Generally, I will use either lighten, screen, or linear dodge. Linear dodge is the kind of the strongest, puts the stars in the most boldly. Screen is kind of in between, and then lighten is the uh, kind of the most subtle. So let's use screen for now. So now we have an HOO image with RGB stars that were extracted separately. If we want to explore some different color mapping options, we can just come back to our layers. And for instance, let's create an SHO version. So to do that, we'll turn on the sulfur layer. And just like we did before, we'll double click to the right of the layer name. And if we want an SHO, then we want just red from this sulfur layer. So I'll turn off the green and blue, click OK. And if you remember though, we have oxygen contributing both green and blue. So we're not getting anything from hydrogen. We're getting green and blue from oxygen and red from sulfur. So let's go back to our oxygen layer and we will turn off the green layer. And just like that, we now have an SHO image with RGB stars. You may notice a bit of a green color cast to this because the hydrogen signal is so strong. So we can add some different adjustment layers. And the way adjustment layers work is they affect everything below that layer. So if I go to the sulfur layer and I click on the, for instance, the color balance adjustment layer, it will add that color balance adjustment layer above the currently selected layer. Click on that and we now get a color balance layer above the hydrogen, sulfur, and oxygen, but below the stars. And we can now use the sliders here to adjust the color balance of just the nebula without affecting the stars. And what you may find as you play with the, the color balance, you'll find different color balances highlight the differences between the, the colors a little bit better. So without this adjustment layer, we tended to have kind of an overall green cast. By neutralizing that green cast a little bit, we can see more of the differences between the blues and cyans and yellows and greens in the core of the nebula. If we want to switch this to an SH, or I'm sorry, an OHS version, we just do the same thing we did before. We go to sulfur first, and in an OHS version, we want sulfur to be blue instead of red, so I'll just uncheck red, turn on blue, click OK, and then we'll go to the oxygen layer, and in an OHS color palette, we want it to be red. We currently have it mapped as blue, so I will turn off the blue, turn on red, click OK, and we now have an OHS color palette. And again, we can use our, our sliders here to, to fine tune that color to, to bring out the, the best color contrast to really be able to see what's happening and you know, get the most pleasing colors we can. That's kind of an overview of how to do color mapping and how to download those sample files and play with it on your own. I would encourage you to try it out. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. If you found this video useful, please uh, like the video and subscribe to the channel. And that way you can be sure to see any of the future videos that I produce. Thanks for watching and I hope you have a great day today and an even better night tonight under clear dark skies. Thanks.